Welcome to Alabama Care, everybody. I'm Sarah Williams, and today I'm here with George Neal, the Director of the Office of Self-Advocacy Services at Alabama Department of Mental Health. Mr. Neal, if you would please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm George Neal with the Alabama Department of Mental Health. Okay, so my first question is, are you originally from Alabama? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm originally from Dayton, Ohio. Uh, we moved to Birmingham in 72, 1972, when I was four years old and my brother was 10 months. Oh, wow. Let me pull the stream up. Hold on just one second. Okay. Um, okay, so football is a big thing in Alabama. So oh, yes. are you an Auburn or Alabama fan? An Alabama fan. You're an Alabama fan. I'm an Auburn fan. Yes, I <laughs> Why did I know that? <laughs> <laughs> I went to Auburn Montgomery for college. <laughs> yeah, I, I've seen that, and I think I've been on the campus for quite a <clears throat> been on the campus a couple of times. Yeah, it's a pretty good campus. Yeah. Well, I also say I've been on the Auburn campus, the one up in Lee County, and that is a gorgeous campus. Mm -hmm. It really is. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, what is Alabama Department of Mental Health? Oh, what what is? What is it? Is that what you? What is it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, it helps people with their. Well, actually, let me start this way. <clears throat> the The department is broken down into three divisions: <clears throat> mental illness, substance abuse, and developmental disabilities and mental illness kind of speaks for itself that's people who have uh, mental health issues and of course substance abuse people who drink too much do drugs and all that and of course there's developmental disabilities that's the area that I work in and we we uh, serve people who have uh, intellectual and developmental disabilities How long have you been with Alabama Department of Mental Health? Last month on the 16th marked 14 years. Wow, oh, so you've been there for a while. Uh-huh. Um, let's see. I have another question over here. So, what is your job title? I am the director of the Office of Self-Advocacy Services. Now, let me explain a little something. When I first came aboard with the department, I was the director of the Office of, of uh, Consumer Empowerment. And then through the years, it, it's changed. I kind of like consumer empowerment a little bit better because it's easier to say, but I'll take self-advocacy <laughs> self services. So. <laughs> Mm. That is easier to say. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> mm. um, so, what does your job involve? Well, I think you've kind of have asked me on that two two different times, two different types of questions. So, I'm just going to go ahead and answer them both. Um, okay. When I first came aboard, came aboard, um, I when got a tour of Partlow in Tuscaloosa. Uh, I had never been in an institution before, so I figured, you know, what the hey, you know, this would be an education. And boy, was it. I saw how people lived in there and how, I mean, they weren't treated badly, but uh, how they were treated and everything. So I felt compelled to go back. So I would go back every month and a half or so, and I had had a 
a contact in there, and I would go in there and, and talk to them about inclusion in the community where they would like to work, you know, living in their own, uh, having their own place with zero or as many supports as they as they need. And so when it was when Partland was slated to close, I had another list, and I would go in and talk to them. And talk to them, kind of see what they wanted to do and everything when they got when they got out. And then after that, uh, I did go visit some of the people that lived in group homes to see how they were adapting to, to community life. And some of them were uh, doing very well. Now, I know you'll probably ask this a little bit later, but I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway since we're right here. Uh, one of the one of the <clears throat> trips that I made up to North Alabama, my partner at the time. We both made phone calls, and he made one, and he ran into the same thing I always did. Couldn't get anybody to call him back, so he just handed me the paper the day I left, and um, so I made that my last stop, and I wasn't sure exactly how to handle that because I wasn't the one that made the phone call. I thought, oh, I know what I'll do, so I got up to the door, and the lady barely opened the door about that wide. <laughs> and looked through and she asked me who I was and when I told her who I was and where I was from boy she flung that door open you thought I was the president oh come <laughs> on in <laughs> so that, that's that's one of my favorite favorite stories of being on the job I, I could sit here and tell you about them all day but anyway that's one of my favorites but then after Partlow closed uh, and everything started to shift for to community living and all that now i go out and make presentations on living integrated living in the community and about the benefits of working making your own money and how you can spend your own money and um doing things you know that you'd like to do making your own choices hanging out with friends going to the movies and that kind of a thing and uh, when we do talk about money, I do talk about budgeting, budgeting their money. And when I get to that, I stop for a couple minutes and I tell them now I have a cell phone and I have an apartment. Mm -hmm. And if I don't pay the bills, what's going to happen? They'll cut the phone off and evict me out of the apartment. Right. So that way, make, make sure I make sure that's how I make sure they've got it. And I think they do most of the time. So I'm up until COVID, I've, I've been all over the state doing that. So, uh, talking about that. So, hopefully, that'll crank back up. And I, I do enjoy doing that. That's the nice part about my job is I'm I'm able to get out and see faces and shake hands and, mm -hmm. and be able to come in contact with the people we serve. And I really do enjoy it. And boy, I tell you, I've met some real cards on the job. <laughs> so, right. so, yeah. So I, I do enjoy talking to the talking to the the people that they have programs, the people that run it and, and the people we serve. So it's, it's a very, it's very interesting work and I really do enjoy it. I worked for uh, Alabama Department of Rehab Services for three years um, before I moved back to Georgia. And uh, uh. that was one of my favorite parts was getting to talk to the clients and uh, oh, you work, learn you their work for stories. Yeah, and I, I hear a lot of stories, and they're all very interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you said you worked for ADRS? I did for three years as their uh, youth consultant. Ah, well, that's why I had to switch to the uh, to do this in the afternoon because we were having their the uh, state rehabilitation committee meeting that's once every three months and that was this morning that was the meeting i had <laughs> but anyway and i enjoy gotcha. being on that committee yeah i enjoy being on that committee so okay so in your own words what is self-advocacy well self-advocacy is you speaking up for yourself if there's something wrong or if you need something you don't feel well you need help of some kind and one of my favorite stories to tell when people ask me that question or we're talking about self-advocacy uh, early in my working career I think I'd only been working a couple of years I felt like I deserved a raise so several mm -hmm. of my co-workers 
said, well, why don't you go ask Butch? Butch was the boss. And so mm -hmm. I did. And um, I talked to him about it. And I think I, I didn't get it right away, but I think I, I think I did get the raise. So I felt pretty good about that. So after, after that, and I've, I've always been, I've always kind of been vocal about things and stuff. So, but also when you get experience, because the longer I worked and everything, the better I got for speaking up to my, for myself and stuff. Right. And there was a time I had to speak up to the lady at the insurance company because there was a lady that, I guess she worked the front desk, and I don't remember exactly what it was about, but one of the agents told me that I could do it this way. And you better believe I stuck to my guns. And I told her, <laughs> I, wasn't rude, I wasn't rude to her or anything, but it just, I said, look, whoever the lady's name was, I said, look, said, look so-and-so said you can ask her. And the lady went, well, okay. And while I walked out of there with my head up and my shoulders back, and I thought, well, good, you did it. So this, <laughs> that is, that's come in pretty handy. So. Yeah, I didn't really start self-advocating for myself, honestly, until college. Oh, wow. Um, like doctor's offices and stuff, I would. But I always had my mom around. Yeah, and then well, I started. I started living on campus um, when I went to college, and my mom wasn't around. Well, I think I became more aware of it when I, I was the state president of People First, and my mother mm -hmm. advocated for me for stuff in school and all that kind of stuff, and that's kind of where I kind of got kind of learned about it because. Uh, my mother and my grandmother, my dad, and several other people were all very vocal, and they they spoke up about stuff and all that, and that's kind of partly where I learned it from. But then, as I, like you, as I got older and and started working, and and the need for it became greater, mm -hmm. I learned to learn, and I got more experience under my belt with it. I got better at it because there was some. I was talking to somebody here at work one day. And I wanted to talk something over with uh, with the, our associate commissioner. And I told him, I said, look, I have no qualms walking up to Courtney's door and banging on the door <laughs> and talking to him. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so. Okay, so let's go back to the, you had said something about you get presentations. So. Yes. Um. What do you think is the most rewarding thing about getting those presentations? I guess I never thought about it quite like that. Um, being able, I guess being able to talk to them and they ask questions and I, and that kind of tells me, you know, they, they got it and they understand and they, and they get excited yeah. about it. And, th and that, that's pretty rewarding. <laughs> Yeah, um, I did, when I was working at ADRS, I did these uh, meetings with clients, and I liked it when they were, like, engaging and asking questions. Yes, yes that always made it nice. Well, one of the other things that is, makes it nice when... Uh, when we were doing, before COVID, when we were doing uh, conferences and stuff, the people we serve would walk up to me and say, well, you, you came to came to our day had program and talked about whatever I talked about. And I go, oh, yeah. So they, they remember me and they they remember what I came and talked about. And that, that's pretty rewarding, too, that it sticks with them. So right. uh, I'm, that, 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 that that's what makes me happy and, and, and very rewarding also. Yeah. Um, let's see. What age range do you work with? I would say probably early 20s up to about retirement. Really? Wow. Yeah, really. Pretty cool. Yeah. So, this was another question that I just thought of. So, you mentioned COVID a few times. How has COVID mm -hmm. affected your job? Well, well, it has a little bit. Uh, when it first came, got here about a year and a half ago, uh, we were all sent home, and 
Um, some of them were off a little bit longer, but I, my boss would, I talked to him about twice a week and, and uh, we would do Zoom meetings and stuff. Well, that was one good thing from COVID. I learned how to Zoom. <laughs> and uh, uh, and uh, so I think after about six weeks, he finally, I was, he knew, because he, he called me up where we talk on the phone. He says, how you doing? I'm ready to go back to work. I'm ready to go back to work. <laughs> so, <laughs> so after about six weeks, I, I came back and there was only about seven or eight of us. And I basically was the only one here, but then the others would rotate. I get a different group of people. I get about two or three of them that here, you know, there'd be about four or five of us. And then the next day be another set of people. Well, finally in about October, uh, we were all back in the office. And uh, mm -hmm. and I have I haven't I haven't done any traveling. That that's still yeah. I, I haven't been out doing presentations. And I'm he know, my boss knows I'm chopping at the bit to get back out there. <laughs> so, right. yeah. so just as soon as it dies, dies down enough to I can get out there, I'm gonna I'm getting a state car and I'm heading back out. So. <laughs> <laughs> So what types of things do you work on with clients? Well, I don't necessarily work one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Usually it's just the presentations. Uh, usually at the presentations, uh, usually they'll come up and tell me stories and stuff that they're stuff that they're doing and working on and that kind of thing. And that's, that's about as close as I, I work with them. There's nothing specific that I do. I guess the most specific thing that I did uh, was when I was going back and forth to um, uh, to Partlow and when they were getting ready to close it when I would take a list of questions you know, making sure that they were making their own choices and stuff, that was about the closest you know, I would really work, work with them but now I'm just doing the, the presentations and everything and, uh, and I have done uh, a few presentations at some of these conferences and stuff so uh, in fact, uh, two years ago was the first time I met Alex, and he uh, we did this very same thing, and he he did my my presentation, and then he he and um, Allison Haynes were here about about a year and a half ago, and we did an interview like you and I are doing. So, so this is this is my third time. So, <laughs> so yeah, but anyway. Absolutely. Uh, just watched the one with you and Allison Hayes. Oh, uh, I don't think actually, I don't think I've seen it. Actually, today. Go ahead. <laughs> oh wow, I don't think I've seen that one all the way through. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't able to watch it all the way through. It was a what I thought was really good though. Oh, thank you. That's good to hear. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Um. Let's see. How do they contact you, like the clients? How do they contact you? <clears throat> well, they haven't called me in a long time, but usually when I go out to presentations and stuff, I have business cards and I'll, I'll mm -hmm. hand them out. But mainly for the presentations and stuff, usually it's the executive directors or somebody in that office will call for me to come and do the presentations and stuff. But you know, but like I said, when I when I go go do the presentations, they don't hesitate. They come up and come up and talk to me and shake my hand and tell me tell me that they're glad I came and that kind of thing. So, so but it, I always make sure I take cards with me. So if they want they, if they want to uh, contact me, they 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 can feel free to. Um, when I first started out, I told them you know if they if they need anything, you know if they want me to come out or help them out with something, you know, please call me. And I'm also told them I'm also the, uh, the complaint department. So if you've got a problem, somebody's harassing you, you know, they're not treating you right. You know, you're not getting your meals. They won't, you're not giving you your snacks or anything. Call me and we'll work it out. <laughs> so, but I've never gotten any types of those calls. So, but I let them know that they can do that if they need to. It's good that you've never gotten a call like that, though. No. Well, when I yeah, first year or so that I was in in uh, uh, with the department, I would get get calls from uh, from the people we serve, from consumers, 
and when I would check the uh, check the voicemail, I would get uh, when they do the time it'd be nine, ten, ten thirty, eleven o'clock at night, and I'm thinking that's not business hours. And some of them I couldn't even understand what they were saying, so wow. I would look into it. To, I would look into it to make sure they really didn't need anything. So, but that hasn't happened in a long time, and. Uh, sometimes I'll get a call from a parent. Uh, my um, information is up on our website. And the first time that happened, I thought, I don't know you, lady. Where'd you get my number from? And then I thought, oh, yeah, the website. <laughs> <laughs> and once in a while, and then sometimes I'll get, they they, uh, think they, they think they're calling the right person, but it turns out they need somebody in uh, substance abuse or mental health or someone else in our office and I'll just politely tell them this person will be able to help you out a little bit better so and give them the number and they go on their way so I have had a lot of interest in phone calls through the years <laughs> so <laughs> so you actually brought up another question um do you get uh, phone calls more from the actual client or like a parent of the client once in a while, I will get a call from a parent, but most of the time, you know, like I said a few minutes ago, most of the time, I just get um, phone calls from uh, the executive directors or somebody from their office to set up a, a presentation. So, um, yeah. Um. So once they do contact you. What does that process look like afterwards? Well, it basically uh, just determines what exactly what they need. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. I can help them. Sometimes they want to. They need to um, to call our one eight hundred number to get on the waiting list. Um, if it's a more serious. Uh, problem then it, it depending on what the problem is is where I'll direct it so um, <clears throat> that doesn't happen very often but there are we, we all we all in the division all have our wear our own hats and sometimes we have to kind of sometimes somebody will wander in a little bit and wander into the wrong area and we'll just kind of have to help them out a little bit and say well you need to talk to so and so so, and that usually works, and they're very grateful. So, um, let's see. So, you've shared a couple of stories, but do you have any more that you would like to share? Not right off the top of my head, no. No. Let's see. If you think of something, just let me know. Okay, I did kind of happen to think of something. Uh, I always, yeah. my parents have been been divorced for a long time, and I got to where I could I like taking airplane trips. And the mm -hmm. first, uh, I and it's part of my job of going to the same, you know, self advocates becoming empowered, going to the uh, the their national conferences, and they have them every couple of years. Where the first time that I went, uh, they had it in uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. And mm -hmm. I was so looking forward to taking the airplane, but I think they asked me, since I was their former president, they chartered a bus and asked me if I would ride with them. Boy, that was a ride up and back. <laughs> <laughs> they had it, they had the TV, they had the T, got to have the bus where you had the TVs all through the, all through the bus and all that. And, but after the, after that, um, uh, uh, I took the airplane, and I just happened to think of one more story. Uh, one of the last airplane trips I took uh, um, to a national conference, uh, uh, it's been, I guess it's been about seven or eight years ago, uh, Darren Morris, who was an advocate that was, he was the, pre the president of People First. He was my vice president, and he and I went together. And he, he didn't drive, but I did. He rode with me to the airport, and we got on the airport here in Montgomery and um, flew out there and uh, I, we flew Delta so they, their hub is in, in Atlanta 
in Atlanta, I always called that my home away from home because that's where that was our lay, my brothers and my layover when we went to see our dad. So on the way back, we were sitting in the airport out there in Oklahoma City, and I felt a tremor in the foss because we were we had a an over an hour layover in Atlanta, and <clears throat> something told me we better eat dinner now. And I expressed that to Darren, so we both ate our dinner, and it's a good thing we did because the plane that we came to let the people out was going to take us to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. They were late because of, because of a storm, and we got to Atlanta, and we were late uh, to get to our the next our connecting flight. And, you know, they got the little cars, the little subway yeah. type things, and we rode mm -hmm. a couple of those. And we had to ride one the wrong way to get to go in the right way. Mm -hmm. About ran on the moving sidewalks, bolted up the stairs. I mean, we literally tore through the airport. And um, got down to the gate, and the lady asked, asked us, <clears throat> Montgomery, and we were both standing, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so she gave us our boarding passes. We got went down the, the jetway, got on the airplane. Everybody's in, belted it, buckled in. He and I got it, and we saw our seats immediately. We were right next to each other. Got set in, got buckled up. They closed the door, and we backed out. I thought, boy, that was a good call. Wow. <laughs> he because we would have not had time to eat dinner. We'd have gotten back to Montgomery and been, been eating the tires off my car. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, Darren had never done that before, but what made that kind of special to me is we, uh, before Darren became my vice president, he'd never flown mm -hmm. on an airplane before. And so he was part of my board and so we made he made his first trip with the board we went to washington dc oh and he absolutely loves flying now and he's part of the uh the save board and all that so he takes airplane trips and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff oh he's become a real a real jet setter now so and uh so but he never had to do that before i thought well i'm glad i ta taught him to do the atlanta shuffle because that's what i've always <laughs> called it <laughs> so but anyway, yeah. So now he's got uh, he's got some uh, experience up under his belt now doing that. So, and he enjoys enjoys getting to do that. And he's been to some places I haven't been. So, and I'm I've been around. So, mm -hmm. so when I was I stated this, but when I was little, I had a hard time advocating for myself, and. Mm -hmm kind of through high school. Um, so how did you learn to advocate for yourself and has that helped in helping your clients? Well, I think when I talk to them, I do talk about going through school and mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't really remember when I advocated for myself, but I do tell them that that uh, one time when uh, I think it was, I think it was elementary school, I do believe, or no, it was junior high, I believe. <clears throat> when, we, when we were in elementary school, I got my height early. And so I was mm -hmm. taller than everybody else in school. And I, when we got to elementary school, uh, or junior high, I was really taller than everybody else. And coming through the hall when we were changing classes you thought I was Moses because people could see me coming see me coming it was like parting the Red Sea <laughs> and then the shorter people would walk behind me because they knew oh he's gonna part part those people so and and I got to be um I guess the class clown a little bit but there were times that people did make fun and I did I would say something to them I remember doing that. But by the time I, we all got to high school, those people that were all shorter than me, they were as tall or taller, played basketball and football and all that. So, but they, they all got tall, as tall or taller than me. So that was quite something. And I tell them that, I, and I, but I also tell them, don't let it bother you because it will pass. And I tell them that as you go along, as you advocate for yourself, when you get, experience you get more comfortable with yourself and you get better so mm -hmm. and i have gotten better with doing it because you know like i said earlier i absolutely have no qualms to speak up for myself <laughs> so. 
I got really good at it when I was in college because that was the first time that I've ever lived on my own or mm -hmm. anything like that. And I had to uh, go to the disability services office to get accommodations and stuff for class. And I had to do that all on my own. It was definitely a learning experience. Yeah. Well, I tell you, as I've, as I've gotten older, and mm -hmm. certain things that I do, especially um, when I have to buy a car or do things that I don't like to do, buying a car is what I hate the most because I hate pushy salesmen. <laughs> and uh, and um, I've gotten a little bit better at it. I still have somebody with me, but I, I have gotten better mm -hmm. at it. And one of the things that I, I've hated the most, in, in fact, going to the doctor, mom, mom's a retired nurse, and she I would have her with me because she could translate with the, the medical terms and all that and talk to me in plain English. But when mom would go with me, um, they would talk to her. Yeah, and I'm that's sitting there what thinking, they did with my mom too. Hey, I'm over here. So finally, when I got moved, down here, I think it may have been the doctor before I moved down here. Um, I told a couple of them, I said, look, talk to me in plain English. Look at me when you're talking to me. And after that, everything was smooth sailing. So, mm -hmm. uh, and now, now there's not a problem. I, th I think they kind of get a feeling now. I better include him in, <laughs> yeah. include him right. in on the conversation. So, yeah. So anyway, I've, there's some things that I've had to kind of readjust or lay a new track for it to, to get things done so uh and of course being out on my own i've gotten more comfortable with things i never did like shopping that much especially especially grocery shopping you can probably sit there looking at me thinking he don't like the grocery shop <laughs> but yeah i but i now now i now i love love going going grocery shopping and doing other things so things have gotten easier as i've learned to do them as I've been out on my own, so. Yeah, I uh, I finally had to tell my mom to uh, like wait in the waiting room at doctor's offices so that they'll actually talk to me instead of her. Yeah. Well, sometimes mom does still go with me and she says, you, you want me to go back there with you? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'd say it a little more politer, but yeah, you no, know, you don't need to go. <laughs> if it's something that I think she needs to hear too, then I'll let her go back. But if it's just general stuff, no, you don't need to go. So yeah. uh, there is something, something else I'd like to say. Sitting here looking at mm -hmm. this laptop, uh, I, I put out a newsletter, and I know I've talked to talk when I've done my presentations and stuff. I've talked about this before that um, I guess it's been about 21 years ago. Uh, up until that point, I didn't want nothing to do with a computer. I didn't want to learn anything about it. I, I didn't, I mean, it's like, get away from me. My, my brother, who is the computer guru of our family, he, he was always into, in the, I mean, ever since he learned what the meaning of the word was, I was always into computers and that kind of thing, and I wouldn't get near him. So finally, one day, about 21 years ago, um, someone asked me if I had an email account. No. And after they asked me that, I kind of got to thinking about it, and I thought, you know, the future is coming up on you. You need to do something about it. So I went and did a little digging around, and I found this thing that's all I didn't really, I don't think I, I think I realized a bit all it did was email. And, um, it was uh, serviced by Yahoo. So mm -hmm. I th did that in October. I was still living in Birmingham at the time. And I, they had just built a, um, a new Tajay Target over on 280. So that's where I was. And I, and I had gone in October. And at that time, my dad was still sending me, he'd send a nice shirt or a pair of pants and $100. And I thought to myself, if you still think you need to buy that then come back and get it and it was it was like 97 or something like that so I thought, all right but in the meantime i did a little digging around and i discovered 
the library. Mm -hmm. The library, that's our tax money, tax dollars at work. They have computers. And mm -hmm. I discovered Hotmail. Boy, was that a good choice. Because <laughs> uh, I, I learned to do things that I wouldn't have learned to do if I got that little Yahoo thing. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> I, learned, I learned how to listen to the radio on the internet and I learned to do quite a few other things. Now I have a laptop at home. I have a smartphone, which I order my groceries on and do a whole lot and listen to the radio on the uh, on my smartphone. In fact, uh, JJZ, which is a jazz station in Philadelphia, I was listening to them before they became an iHeart radio station. So now, just to show you how things, how I've learned and things have come up, the car that I have, I've only had it for ten months, and now I can Bluetooth the. Uh, that the iHeart radio station and Spotify, and I've got another one to the car stereo and listen to it through the car speakers. So now I can listen to that station on my car stereo, like it, like I'm really tuned, got it tuned in, mm -hmm. and it's great. Yeah. So and I try to really relay that to the people we serve when I give those um, uh, presentations. And the other thing I wanted to say was also beneficiary of going to the library, the one that I went to in Pelham had one-time classes where they take, teach you how to use the computer and make you familiar with it, kind of go around and kick the tires and all that and, and teach you how to, how to use it and all that. And that was very beneficial too. So um, now I still, it's not required from my job to, to know how to type. I hunt and peck still, but as you see, I'm wearing a headset here and it's got mm -hmm. a microphone. And now that I've got the laptop and I had done it before, I got that dragon dictation where I, I'm probably running my mouth typing. I probably type faster than some people do with their hands. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that has helped, and I've used it since I've had the laptop. So, it has it's been very helpful, and so, and I try to relay that to the in the in the presentations and stuff. So. Do you think that self-advocacy is something that everyone can learn, or is it just something people with disabilities should learn? Oh, well, I think it's everybody. Mm -hmm. Because because um, I think especially people with disabilities should definitely know how to how to um, uh, self-advocate for themselves. And of course, if if I was normal. You know, I, I know and even people who don't have disabilities need to know how to advocate for themselves, too. And sometimes it's nice, even though you know how to do it, uh, having someone else advocate for you. So that kind of mm -hmm. helps, too, because like sometimes I know we all get the pinch, and it's kind of nice to, to have someone help out. So, yeah, right. I think everybody should, everybody should learn how to do that. So, yeah. I think that was all my questions. Was there anything else that you would like to say or talk about? I'm at that age now where I have it on my mind, and then when it comes time to say it, it just it goes away. disappears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hate that. Well, I think that's probably about it for me. So, okay. the watch will watch will get off here, and I'll think of ten different things I could have said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there is a couple of things I'd like to say real quick. Now that I think <laughs> okay. about it, I kind of wanted to expand on a couple of things. Um, I did mention that I do drive. Uh, I've been doing that for for uh, thirty three years now, and that's something that I really enjoy doing. Um, mm -hmm. And I've been living on my own for twenty five, uh, and that's something else that I enjoy doing. And I've been working for about. The same length of time, about 33 years, actually 32. Um, and I, I really do recommend doing that. If you can't drive, then, uh, or if you have a medical issue or something that keep, hinders you from doing that, I highly recommend uh, um, learning to use public transportation and along with the smartphone, uh, Uber and Lyft and all that, or get a cab to where you, because that will definitely. Even if you don't drive, knowing how to use the public transportation, uh, 
that'll help uh, help you be more independent. The last time I went to Washington D.C., had a layover in Atlanta, and when I was going from flying from Atlanta to back to Montgomery, and I sat next to a businessman. He lived out west, and his son was stationed at one of the uh, uh, Air Force bases here. He was going for a two or three day visit, and he'd been he told me that he'd been going. Doing, taking his business trips to Washington, D.C., I think at that time, for almost 40 years, and he never has rented a car. He learned to use their public transportation. And that mm -hmm. just highly impressed me. I thought, yeah, if I could just get the <laughs> teach that, of course, I could learn to do that. Too. I've used our public transportation here a couple of, a few times. So, and the one last thing I'd like to say, because of learning to fly on an airplane and doing that by myself. Uh, I, it's been, I guess about, yeah, about 13 years ago, my brother approached me and said that he and his family were gonna take a cruise. And I'd kind of been talking about it. So uh, at Christmas, he brought it up and told me what they wanted to do and everything. I said, well, let me think about it. So when we all gathered back together at my mother's on New Year's, he walked up to me and says, well, what about it? I said, what about what? Well, you're going to go with us on the cruise. So I thought, well, all right, what the hell, I'll go. So, mm -hmm. uh, so he taught me the ropes. He made sure I knew just about everything I needed to know to do that. And guess what? When we came back, I said, see you later. <laughs> I went on three, three more by myself. And I have thoroughly wow. enjoyed it. <laughs> so, wow. so if I, if I if I can do it, I know they can do it. So, I've been on one cruise. <laughs> well, once once the pandemic gets cleared up, you need to go again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I really liked it. <laughs> yeah, well, I like it too. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that was. Oh. Okay. Well, thank you for letting me interview you. Oh, you're very welcome. Anytime. The next time you talk to Alex, tell him he missed a real good time. <laughs> I will. I will let him know that. Uh, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll see you, everyone, uh, in my next interview. Bye, guys.